A burst of data kicks von Braun's computers into hyperdrive. Pike's brother Leo has come back online. If Ike or Leo were to come back uh, after having gone offline, the first thing you'd want to know is why. They'd need to send you some information, what caused the reboot, anything they could tell you, as well as, if possible, have saved some data from just before the problem so that you'd be able to see what was going on when the problem occurred, and then their response to it so that you could start trying to figure out what had happened. The grove back is the most massive animal that we have a record of on Darwin IV. Uh, it's tremendous size, uh, supports the own, my own theory that I put together on these animals, and I think shared by some other scientists. They have a much lower body density. The size of our grove back far exceeds the, the mass of any of our dinosaurs that we have records of living on Earth. My first impression on the dagger wrist is that this is a very large praying mantis. Uh, it has a limb configuration that is reminiscent of the forelimbs of a praying mantis, although the dagger wrist uses them to climb trees, which was very interesting. Moving by gliding is very interesting. This is a rather large animal. The membranes involved in producing the lift, the gliding appear rather small. We have to remember that the gravity on Darwin IV is, is less than, than Earth, and we also have to remember we're gliding through a thicker atmosphere, so the dynamics are going to be different. People ask me all the time, you know, why should we care about discovering new things if it isn't applicable to us? If it doesn't put food on the table or gas in the car, why should we care? And all I can, all I can say is that, you know, if you're not curious enough to want to know the answer to anything you can, anything we can discover, then you're not, you're not human. Next, Ike solves a gruesome mystery in the forest, and the wide wings of aerial hunters cast their shadows across Darwin IV. The Von Braun has picked up a signal from the lost probe, Leo. Ike is sent on a mission to find his twin, but his search has barely begun when Ike encounters a pair of Darwin IV's greatest predators on this alien planet. I think statistics would say life is a cosmic imperative. I personally believe from all the observations that NASA has offered humanity for the last 50 years suggests that the environments could be there. We now recognize potential habitats on Mars today that you could insert Earth life into and have it potentially be sustained. This is amazing. 25 years ago, we might not have said that. And then the question is, why don't we see it all around us? And I, I think that begs the bigger question, do we really know what we see all around us? We are just taking those baby steps into that cosmic ocean with a few elegant robots and a few human voyages. We've barely left the cradle. As Von Braun tries to get a fix on Leo, his twin probe, Ike, moves deeper into the foothills of Darwin IV. Like groves of pine on Earth, the pocket forests of Darwin IV are covered with colonies of passive organisms that feed on the moist, spongy floor. As Ike continues to explore, the Darwin Reconnaissance Orbiter detects a sudden atmospheric disturbance. While Ike's sensors clock the wind at only 30 miles per hour, the super-dense atmosphere gives it the kinetic punch of a young hurricane. Ike has no choice but to head for the ceiling to get out of the storm. Ike fires a salvo of weather balloons to sample the currents of the unexplored upper atmosphere. Unlike the Earth, where storms are fed by great oceans, Darwin IV's airspace is a shifting maze of thermals rising from hot spots created by the two suns. The power of passing storms present a new and potentially lethal threat to the mission.
Ike is little more than a fragile sack of hydrogen on a planet where even the weather seems predatory. But for now, it's back to the business of discovery. Ike's motion sensors pick up activity within the grove. Not on the ground, but in the air. The link between a deadly hunter, its prey, and the plaque bark tree suddenly unfolds. The dark king of the pocket forest fills in the missing pieces of a predatory puzzle. Trunk suckers feed on the sap from gashes made by climbing dagger wrists. Ike's data confirms that dagger wrists extract the pre-digested material from the corpses of their prey. A gruesome but energy-efficient survival strategy on Darwin IV. The weather on Darwin IV is puzzling. 130 days have passed since Ike began his survey, and never once has it rained. As far as Ike's sensors can determine, Darwin's surface waters flow from underground aquifers and springs. That might explain why forests can only exist in small pockets. Ike takes his survey to a high meadow where his side-scanning radar detects some new blips. A sonar ping throws a herd of littoral lopes into a pattern. Like the arrow tongue, these aerial killers hunt with sonar. No creature on Darwin 4 is safe from the lance of the flying skewer. The lance itself is hollow and as strong as titanium. Running through its center is a razor spiked tongue that bores through the toughest hide. Helpless prey are killed and drained of fluids. Scavengers, called jet darters, feed on the rest. The skewers are remarkable. Uh, a large animal for flight and the fact that they're not using their, their wings or aerofoils in, in order to fly. They seem to be jet propulsed. Using the skewer to impact a prey item and then lift it is highly unexpected. The, the forces involved there are tremendous. Um, in a flying animal, if you suddenly attach all that weight on the front, that shifts the center of balance of the animal, which is very critical for flying, which is almost certainly why they almost go straight up after they impale a, a prey item, because the center of gravity, the center of weight for the animal shifted so far forward. Dropping of the prey item and having another one swoop it and catch it in the air is again very unusual. Uh, kind of reminded me of what we see when we throw uh, large hunks of fish up to frigate birds when you're out fishing, the way they fight and interact for it. We'd want to know is there competition here or is this cooperative behavior? Are these related individuals? Um, all sorts of interesting questions about skewers. Next, a giant takes a step in the wrong direction 
and Ike enters a deadly matrix. On Darwin 4, Probe Da Vinci attempts to get a fix on his crash site. Meanwhile, Ike, his twin, discovers size is no guarantee of survival on alien planet. One piece of evidence that suggests the probability of primitive